Hey everyone, today we're going to be looking at the code to build this Simon game. Uh, let's look at the functionality first. So we click start, and uh, it blinks a sequence. We click on it, it also plays a sound, right? And it adds a score. And if you mess up, game over, and it adds, it shows us our new best score. We click start, our best score is still 2, right? And now we're creating a new score. Okay, and again, if we mess up, game over. Uh, so if you if this interests you, uh, keep watching, and we're gonna look at the code. All right, so just a broad overview of kind of how we made this Simon game, right? Uh, we imported some Google fonts here. This is our HTML. Uh, you can find these Google fonts if you type in Google fonts, and then you can kind of click through the Google fonts, see what you like, add them, and it'll give you this link that you can add to your HTML file. Um, we have the setup for your score and the user score and the setup for the game buttons and I styled these this and this with CSS grid uh, this one's like grid template columns auto 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 and this one is uh, two different two, two columns it's a two by two right so here we have the three the auto 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 for the scores uh, div and then the gamepad div is a two by two and it's justified content to center um, this button here, I grabbed the styles for this from my own website. Uh, you can find this website here if you want to try out some of these buttons and different styles. Uh, you just kind of can test them out. And then if you like a button, you click copy code, paste that in your style.css, and then you add these particular classes to the HTML element that you want to style that way. And you're set. You've got yourself a nice, uh, fun colored button, right? Um, so that's how I made that start button. Let's get into a little bit of the code, just a little. Uh, I have some sound files here that I imported. Uh, I actually used a program called Audacity uh, that you can download for free. Um, and I recorded uh, someone playing the Simon game directly on YouTube. And I was able to use Audacity to save each of those individual Simon sounds as an MP3. And then I put those MP3s in my project here. And that's how I use those sounds. And actually, let's go to our sounds.js and we used a JavaScript library called Howler. Um, we can actually go to it here, right? So hopefully Howler, maybe if it lets me, come on. There we go. Howler, Howler docs, that'll work. Internet's a little slow, there it is. So we use this library right here, and it's just called howlerjs.com. And if you go through the docs, you can see all the nitty-gritty details about how it works and why it works. Um, <clears throat> but it basically it, it makes sound really simple for your code, right? Uh, so we just create new house for every sound we want. Uh, so this is like a class, right? We're creating a new instance of that class. And we can set the source. In my case, it's from the sounds folder. Um, for each howl and I can set the volume right because on the YouTube video the volume was higher and lower on specific sounds So I adjusted accordingly um, Also with parcel interesting note is you can't just say hey, you can't you can't just directly go to the sounds folder you have to require this entire sounds folder and I required the whole thing as an object and then I went inside and used the sound based on the file name that's how I got those sounds. Exported them and used them in the gamepad, which has the bulk of our functionality, right? So there's a gamepad class, and you can see kind of where we add new colors, blink sequence. This set interval is interesting. Um, every second it blinks uh, a color until we run out of colors. Once it's empty, uh, then it's the user's turn. I thought that was interesting. Um, another interesting note is this. Uh, when you click inside of... Let's go back to Simon here. When you click anywhere in this gamepad, sometimes you click here, and it still registers a click event, but if it if it's not uh, one of these IDs of these buttons, you don't want it to do anything. That's what this it is that's what this is valid function is for. Um, we got our highlight and remove highlight pads here, or functions, and that does exactly what it says it does. It adds the blink color, whichever color you click on, it, it adds that class to whatever you click on mouse down. There's some mouse down and mouse up events up here. So on mouse down, 
uh, you want to highlight the pad and it adds that uh, brighter class color and that's how you get the highlight effects so if we refresh start that's when you click and then when you let up it removes that class and that's how you get that effect um check pads is kind of where the main game logic runs uh and these are smaller functions here so the computer's turn end game sequence display new best score uh, so these are our sounds that we imported from our Howler, uh, our sound file with Howler, right? And to run those sounds, if you want to play a sound, you just say, hey, that sound that I imported, dot play. And that's it. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much the Simon game in a nutshell. Uh, you couldn't see that last bit, sorry. Uh, here it is. So uh, these sounds here, uh, just... That sound dot play is how you would play that play the sound that we imported with Howler from that sound JS file. Uh, that's pretty much it for the game. Uh, if you're interested in building this game and you like the the kind of the concepts of it and the idea, uh, just go to the GitHub link in the description below. Try and build it yourself first, right, with what you see here. Um, if that's not enough, uh, in the link below is the GitHub where you can get all the source code for it and kind of work your way through and build up this Simon game. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you liked and you want to see more projects like this, uh, please subscribe, follow, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.